Ursula Andress was the first ever Bond girl and one of the biggest sex symbols Hollywood has ever seen. But some may call her a man-eater and a homewrecker, and if you hear her crazy sex life, you will know why. And then there's the burning question. Did she sleep with Elvis Presley and Sean Connery from losing her virginity? At 17 to seducing a guy 30 years her junior, this is the untold crazy sex life of Ursula Andress. It seems Ursula Andress had a wild streak from the earliest age. In fact, her sexual adventures started in Scandal. She was just 17 when she lost her virginity to a much older actor, as in much, much older. While at school and living in Switzerland, a French film crew visited the school that Ursula was attending. It was then that she first laid eyes on the handsome French actor, Daniel Gelin. She immediately fell in love with Daniel and Needles to say, the two had a wild and passionate romance. But there were so many things wrong with their relationship on so many levels. First, Daniel was married. Secondly, she was 17 and he was 32. And even more shocking, Ursula had apparently run away from boarding school to follow her lover. And not just around the block, but all the way to Paris. By the time Interpol had finally tracked her down, she was already in Italy. By then, Ursula and Daniel had split up, reportedly due to his substance abuse and some other issues on top of that as well. But it seems the actor had a thing for young girls. Because also, while still married to his wife, he slept with another 17-year-old aspiring model named Marie Christine Schneider. From that affair, the two had one child together, who would later become the famous French actress, Maria Schneider. But back to Ursula. Still only 17 and living in Italy, her acting career was about to kick off, but so was her wild and crazy sex life. Hiding away from her parents and from Interpol, she sought refuge with a friend, Brigitte Bardot. Anyone familiar with Brigitte Bardot will know that she was most famous for being one of the wildest sex kittens that Hollywood had ever seen. So Ursula, still a teenager, found herself hiding out with Bardot and her then-boyfriend film director, Roger Vadim. And by the way, Bardot and Vadim had also started their scandalous love affair when Bardot was just 16 and Vadim 22. Safe to say then that Ursula found herself in bad company, wouldn't you say? In fact, Vadim would later brag about what went on in that apartment between the three of them. Apparently, he wrote in his memoir that they slept innocently naked three to a bed. But given three such strong sexual personalities, do you really think it was innocent? In 1955, on the advice of Marlon Brando, Ursula moved to America to focus on her film career. It would later come out that Ursula and Brando also had a tango under the sheets. And it's quite a funny story, actually. In his memoir, Brando revealed that he could not remember if he had slept with Ursula or not. Famous for reportedly bedding hundreds of women, one could probably not blame him if he lost track of all his lovers. Finally, he wrote to Ursula years later and asked her if they had ever slept together. And you can probably already guess her answer. It was a resounding yes. Once in the States, it wasn't long before she added James Dean to her list of sexual conquests. At the time, Dean was in a relationship with another actress, Pierre Angeli. Ursula and Dean dated for only four months, but according to some sources, it was a lot of fighting between a lot of lovemaking. Shortly after they broke up, Dean died in that infamous, harrowing car crash. He was just 24 years old. One of Ursula's next alleged lovers was actor Dennis Hopper, but it didn't last long at all. Moving on from him, and onto her third lover in the space of one year, the 19-year-old Ursula set her eyes on actor John Derrick. Derrick was 10 years older than her and a married man with two children. Clearly, Ursula had a thing for older men who were either married or in a relationship. Derrick eventually left his wife and children to be with his new lover, and he and Ursula got married in 1957. He taught me how to be a woman. I knew nothing of the world before him. I was still a child, and he taught me how to love. It was a beautiful relationship, she said years later. Back to me, I thought it was not a good script at all, but then I was very happy about it because I thought, if I accept that script, at least it's not going to be my fault that the film is bad. Derek also helped her to land what was arguably the biggest role of her career, that of Honey Rider in the 1962 Bond film, Dr. No, starring Sean Connery. She became the very first Bond girl to grace our screens, her sexy white bikini scene as she strolls out of the ocean is still one of the most iconic Bond girl scenes of all time. 
And what many people might still not know, Ursula could barely speak a word of English. Her scenes were dubbed by a voice actress. Oh, my boat is too small to be noticed. And I often come here to get the shells. But none of that mattered because she had exactly the overwhelming sex appeal that the producers wanted. The film cemented Ursula Andress in time as one of the biggest Hollywood sex symbols ever. One thing, however, is puzzling. As you'll learn from this video, Ursula could simply not keep her hands off her co-stars and had affairs with a whole lot of them. But why not with Connery? There are rumors floating around that they did have an affair. According to only one source, Screen Rant, they broke things off only when Connery's wife became pregnant. However, according to Ursula, she and Connery had only ever been close and lifelong friends. In fact, Connery is the godfather of Ursula's only child. Her next major film involved yet another big name. This time it was Elvis Presley, with whom she starred in the 1963 film Fun in Acapulco. There's no evidence at all that Elvis and Ursula did sleep together, but apparently she wanted to. One of Elvis's very close friends, Sonny West, said that during filming there was definitely some spark between them. They were very close. She went after him. She wanted him badly. Elvis supposedly resisted on account that Ursula was married, but even Priscilla Presley, Elvis's wife, was extremely worried that Elvis would fall for the blonde sex bomb's charms. Actually, Priscilla herself called Ursula Andress a sex goddess. So who knows if something really did happen or not? What do you think? Anyways, Ursula and Derek's love didn't last long and the couple split in 1964, but only officially divorced two years later. And can you guess the reason for their split? The easy answer is that Ursula slept around with one of her co-stars. To make things even more juicy, however, was the fact that this affair happened while she was filming Once Before I Die, starring opposite her husband in the same film. Though separated, but still technically married, she dated her co-star John Richardson for a while. Next, she hopped on to another co-star, Marcello Mastroianni, whose wife had also left him because of his many scandalous affairs with younger girls. If you guessed that her next lover was once again one of her co-stars, then you are spot on. In 1965, she played alongside Jean-Paul Belmondo in the film Up To His Ears. Once again, it should come as no great shock that Belmondo was a married man with three children. If she thought that Derek had taught her how to live and how to love, then this new man was going to change her world. Jean-Paul was fun, Ursula said. He was one of the most passionate, desirable men in the world. He was sensational, incredible, fantastic. With him, I discovered worlds I never knew existed. This time, it seemed quite serious, at least for a while. Ursula moved in with her new lover, and the two stayed together until 1972. She also added John DeLorean to her list of lovers. He will probably forever be most famous for the DeLorean car from Back to the Future. Just the following year, she had her sights on Italian actor Fabio Testi. This was also not just a random fiery fling. Ursula and Tetsi lasted for four years, even living together. For the next few years, Ursula darted between sexual partners in a string of wild and crazy love affairs. Then, while filming Clash of the Titans in 1979, she met actor Harry Hamlin. At the time, he was just 28, and she was 16 years his senior. But that did not stop her from pursuing the young actor, and from the sounds of it, seducing him. At first, Hamlin was shy and nervous around her, and for obvious reasons. He was just a kid when Ursula appeared in that classic white bikini and James Bond oozing sex appeal. Almost every kid had a poster of her on the wall, or at least dreamed of her. And don't forget, she was also featured in Playboy. Not only had I seen Dr. No, but for some unknown reason, my parents gave me a five-year subscription to Playboy for Christmas when I was 12, Hamlin revealed. I don't think I told her that when we first met. I'm not sure I said, by the way, Ursula, I loved your layout in Playboy when I was 13. So as the story goes, Ursula summoned Hamlin to her room, and he was all too happy to oblige. It was the very first time the two had a little fun together, and from that, Ursula got pregnant. At age 44 in 1980, she gave birth to her first and only child, Dimitri Alexander Hamlin. While not as famous as his parents, Dimitri has also had some acting roles. Ursula and Hamlin stayed together until 1983, which was probably a lot longer than either had planned or hoped for, given that they most likely just wanted one night of good fun. After that, Ursula had another string of wild and passionate romances with some very famous names. In 1986, it would seem that her love for older men had officially waned, 
especially given that she was 16 years older than Hamlin. She briefly had a crazy affair with a man called Fausto Fagoni. By this time, Ursula was 50 and Fagon was just 20. Yes, that's exactly right. She was 30 years older than him. Needless to say, his parents wanted none of it. Now, however, she lives a quiet life, as one would when you're already nearing 90 years old. Ursula was indeed one of the greatest film sex symbols of all time. Of course, she played highly sexualized roles on screen, but did you know that she had an equally crazy sex life behind the scenes? And what about Sean Connery and Elvis Presley? Do you think she really kept her hands off of them? Or, if you enjoyed this video, there's a good chance you'll also enjoy the one showing on your screen right now. Click, enjoy, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you on the next one.